In this tutorial, we're going to develop a version of a web browser that's so stripped down that I call it the poor man's web browser. Basically, it's not going to render anything visual, but instead it's going to pull the HTML source of a web page from the net and then print that to the screen. So because we're still doing I.O., I want to start by saying using system.io, and then we also have to say using system.net.sockets. And that statement right there is what allows us to do network programming. So the basic idea is that we're going to prompt the user for the name of a server, and then we'll connect to that server and request its default web page. So to begin with, let's drop down here to main, and I can say console.writeline, please enter the name of a server. After that, I can read in the name of a server. String server gets console.readline. And now that I have the name of the server, I need to be able to connect to it. So to do that, I'm going to create something called a TCP client that we'll call client. It's a new TCP client. And notice that there are four different ways that we can bring this client to life. If I go to the fourth constructor, you can see that it takes the name of the server as well as the port. So I can pass it the server as well as port 80. And again, remember 80 is the web port, or I should say HTTP. All right, good. Now that we've established the connection, we need to be able to read and write data to that connection. So I'll create a stream reader, SR, it's a new stream reader. And notice that in this case it wants a stream. So what I can do is I can get the stream from the connection. And to do that, I'll say client.getStream. I can do the same thing with a stream writer. Stream writer SW gets a new stream writer. Doing the same thing, client.getStream. And at this point, the only thing I need to work with is SR and SW. In other words, if I say something like SR.readline, I'm reading from the network connection. If I say SW.writeline, I'm writing to the network connection. So we don't have to bother working with client anymore. All right, the next thing that we need to do is to make the request. So let's drop down a little bit. And I can say SW.writeline. And in this case, I'm going to request the default web page. So to do that, I'll say get slash using HTTP protocol 1.0. And then I'll put in these two slash ends, which again are just part of the protocol. And close that out. And then it's really important for us to remember to flush this stream. So I'll say SW.flush. Now if I didn't do that, remember this request right here is going to get stuck in that buffer, and then it's going to appear that your program is hanging. All right, now that we've made the request, we can expect to get some data back from the server. So I can say string data gets sr.readline. And then very similar to how we read a file in its entirety, I can say while the data does not equal null, then we can print that data out, console.writeline data. Immediately after that, it's important to read some more data. So we'll read line. And again, if I didn't include this line right here, then we wouldn't be reading any more data, and essentially we would have an infinite loop. Now, the last thing that we'll want to do is to close the stream. So I can come down here and say client.close, and that should be it. Now, if we were to run this code, and notice that it asked me to enter in the name of a server, so we'll put in Google. And if you notice, it pulled the HTML of Google, and then it threw an exception. And the exception occurred because Google shut down their side of the connection before we shut down ours. So let's close this. Now, of course, if we wanted our code to behave a little bit better, we could include some exception handling. So I can try to do this code and then catch any exceptions that occur. And if we were to run it again, we enter in Google again. And in this case, we handle the exception by ignoring it. Now, just to prove that this is really working, you can scroll to the top of this. And if you look down here, you can see this doc type HTML and all of this code right here. If I were to go to Google and then right click on the page and say view page source, you would see that we see all the same code. There you go. So that's it for this tutorial. You can see that the code is relatively small, but it allows us to connect to any server in the world that's publicly available. So hopefully you now understand a little bit more about pulling information from the network.